Hello all. I'm reviewing what might be one of the most popular pale ales in New England. It's Maine Brewing Company's Peeper. Of course, it's in a weird packaging that it seems like Maine is the last holdout of doing big bottles at like a higher price and not switching to cans, but it might be in part because they bottle condition their beers. I think dinner is the only one that is not bottle conditioned so they have this awesome feel head and carbonation and everything and they know how they can they, they can bottle condition it and naturally carbonate it in the bottle in a ver very short amount of time somehow too <clears throat> so it's not like it has to sit for a month and get old at the brewery so peeper is five and a half percent alcohol this was bottled on march 26 so that was about three weeks less than three weeks ago so very fresh this uses old school hops, Amarillo, Cascades, and Tenniel. Um, mostly just pale wheat. There's a little bit of Vienna and, and wheat in it. And I really like this beer. Don't drink it as much as I wish I could. Because price per ounce, it's as much as that really fancy double IPA that you buy. <laughs> or more. But it's very different from all those beers. It's not super duper hazy. It does have the bottle conditioning, which basically no New England pale ales or IPAs aren't actually carbonated to my knowledge. <clears throat> but it's starting to get warmer. And this one is so nice and pale and refreshing. And my glass is a little bit dirty. But you can see it's already generating a really big nice thick head it's not quite as carbonated as like a saison or some kind of bottle conditioned belgian beer but you can see all those big bubbles popping up that's because of the dirty bottom of the glass and that will quickly clean it and in some beers that might actually make the beer get kind of flat but in a beer like this it should be beautifully carbonated Let's see if I can get a little bit more in there and check out that beautiful head forming a flat top right there. Mm. Maybe that aroma is almost nostalgic to me. It's a, a little bit like Sierra Nevada but without the caramel malt. But really citrusy and herbal not really tropical. Maybe there's a touch of peach in there. But mostly just sweet orange. Very, very light, mild pine. Almost spruce. And their clean yeast is, I don't know, it, it is holding back from a lot of esters, but helping to give it a, some kind of bite in there. And you can see the head is just sticking around like crazy. But it just smells so refreshing. I guess another beer <clears throat> that's also from Maine that this reminds me of is uh, Rising Tides Daymark. That one has a little bit of rye in it, and, and it's I think it's Cascade and Centennial, so it's, it's pretty sim similar. Um, I think both of those breweries started around the same time. <clears throat> well, this one just it's a little bit milder, I think, than than Rising Tides and. Just the fresh live yeast smell from the bottle conditioning just makes it nice. It's, it's a little bit doughier. It smells like fresh, you know, fresh, fresh rising bread. Just a little bit. It's not cidery, super clean. Yeah, I love that. Mm. And so light and airy on your tongue. <clears throat> I really like body, but pretty firm bitterness. Just enough, and it has a little bit of a lemon, lime, orange, juicy thing going on. It's really nice. Spiciness lingers, so it's just, yeah, hints of woodsy pine, but not too much, not sappy. It's just its own thing. It's like living somewhere in between West Coast Pale Ales and East Coast Pale Ales, but then also bottle conditioned which neither of them do. It, it's, it's, it's really its own thing. And I think that's why it's so perennial, perennially popular. 
It's on Taffet. <clears throat> so many different bars around here. And I, I'm a huge fan. I would drink this a lot more if it were, you know, pr priced closer to what your average pale ale is. But I know that it's whatever they're doing is probably more expensive. But if this ever turns out in cans, even if it's not bottle conditioned, I would be very, very excited and buy a lot of it. A lot more of it. <clears throat> I wonder if Maine Beer has anything up their sleeves because like literally this is like what the beer label and the beer has looked like and the recipe has probably been the same for five to ten years. Like I guess this beer's only been around for ten years and but it's it's just such, such a consistent awesome beer. Mm. But it's so unique. Yeah, I have to say that the only thing that, that is, comes close to this is Rising Tides Daymark, which is, that one's pretty under the radar. But I'm a huge fan of that brewery, too. Mm. Maybe there's a hint of apricot in there, too. A very, very subtle stone fruit. Not, not, yeah, not really that peachy. Not juicy and tropical at all. But that's not what I want. It's mostly just lemon pepper. And hints of forest. But so refreshing, such a nice feel. Just so airy on the tongue and in your mouth, but not, you know, watery and so unsubstantial that it's like drinking nothing. <clears throat> it's, it's not a session IPA or anything like that, though it is quite hoppy for a pale ale. It's just, it's kind of a mas masterpiece. It's like, I would have to say it's kind of like the Sierra Nevada of New England, even though Sierra Nevada Pale Ale's been around for a lot longer. <clears throat> uh, but it's just a really special thing. I, I wish that more brewers would try to replicate something like this. And it's, yeah, very carbonated, burping a lot, but I like that about it. I'm also just drinking it so fast. The brewers pe try to rep replicate this um, <clears throat> and don't just go for more hazy pale ales and stuff. There are plenty of those out now. Try to figure out how to bottle condition your fresh pale ales and get them out there and make them like this and I will be very 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 happy and I should probably stop rambling but this beer deserves close to a five. I really really like it. Bye.